of one. Today, I am going to be speaking with a mother who unfortunately lost her son to domestic violence. Oftentimes, we think it's females who may lose their lives or suffer at the hands of someone else when it's domestic violence, but it is equal among men and women. Welcome to the show, Ms. Barbara. Thank you. Ms. Barbara, please tell the viewers about your son, your son's name, what he loved to do. Tell us all the bright things about your baby boy. Okay. Um, well, my son's name is, well, was Jeffrey. Yeah. My son's name is Jeffrey Tillery Jr. And um, he is a father of four children, three boys and one girl. He was 33 years old. Jeffrey loved life. That's one thing I can say about him. He he loved life. And um, it, it really kind of bothers me. You know, some people on, on, on like rainy days or something like that, maybe that might bother them when, mm -hmm. you know, they might miss their children on rainy days because it, it might make them sad on rainy days because it might make them think of their children on rainy days. But I think of him on sunny days because Jeffrey would be out on sunny days. He would be out on rainy days. He would be out on snowy days. Jeff just loved life, period. It, the, the weather wouldn't stop him at all. Nothing would stop him from getting out. Uh, a, a hurricane, nothing would stop him from getting out and just doing things, going to a concert or anything like that. Tell me about Jeffrey as a child and, and coming up and what school did Jeffrey go to? Jeff was, he was a funny kid. Everybody loved Jeff, no matter what school he went to, high school, elementary school, middle school. We always got the same report from his teachers. Um, they always would say, Jeff, Jeff is a smart kid. Jeff is a good kid. We always would get the same report from everybody. And um, we would say he is. But why why doesn't he, you know, display that same, you know, ability at home? You know, we would, mm -hmm. you know, we would say that kind of thing, but we knew he had it in him, you know. Mm -hmm. But um he was a funny kid, you know, he was always like a comedian and stuff like that. He would do funny things. I remember one time when he was in second grade, he broke his toe and um he came home, he was limping. And we said, Jeff, what happened? And he said, well, I, I ran into a pole. And we said, well, well, how, how did you run into a pole? And he said, well, I, I was chasing a girl and I, I ran into a pole. Well, okay. Well, what were you gonna do when you, if you caught the girl? Well, I was gonna kiss her. Okay. So he was trying to chase the girl and then he ran into a pole. So he ended up, uh, you know, breaking his toe and he ended up missing the, I think maybe about a week, the last week of school. And then he did end up maybe going to school the last day of like second grade or something like that. And the kids ended up signing his little case. Well, it oh. wasn't a it was like a little shoe, you know, those yeah. little shoes that you have. Yeah, they signed his shoe and then they put a, a the teacher put like a little Nike swoosh on it for him because he was so, he was so stylish. That's what they always would say. He was like a little stylish kid and stuff like that. And um, I remember another time he had a he, another injury. He had a burn on his forehead. When I came home from work, mm -hmm. it was like a circle on his head. It was just like a perfect little circle. I I said, Jeff, what what happened to your head? And he says, Well, mom, I um 
I burned my head with a dime. How do you burn your head with a dime? He was playing with a dime, flipped it. I, 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 I still don't even know the full story, but he had a dime and it was, and I looked closely and it was a perfect dime mm -hmm. on his forehead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy look. He always, he's always got himself injured and stuff like that. But um, girls loved him. Girls, girls, the girls love Jeff. He's a handsome little guy. Jeff okay. was handsome. Yeah, he's he was a handsome little fellow. Well, he tell. started out in, in second grade, so mm -hmm. I guess he knew he was a he was a ladies' man. Mm -hmm. So now tell us about the day that changed your life forever. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um well. I got a call from my daughter. Um, I was home sleeping and I got a call from my daughter. She asked me to take a ride with her. And I said, um, okay. I kind of didn't want to, but I said, okay. Cause I heard the urgency in her voice. So I said, okay. And she says, okay, fine. Um, just get dressed, hurry up and get dressed. And um, I'll be over there in 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh gosh. And I, so I threw some clothes on and um, she was here at, at my house in 10 minutes, like she said. And then when I got in her car, she, um, I put my phone in her, um, the little- oh, council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little coffee cup thing, whatever, in her car. And then she just took my phone. And so I'm looking at her, you know, like, she's crazy. I'm like, why, why is she taking my phone? But I said, okay. And I said, okay, where are we going? And then she says, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, mommy. I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a minute. And then I see her punching in, you know, her GPS where we're about to go. And then um, so I'm trying to see where 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 we're about to go. I couldn't see where we were going, but I could tell that it was going to take a half an hour. So right. I, I'm like, OK, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, go with the flow. And then her phone rings and then she answers the phone and she's like, I'm in the, I'm in the car with my mom. And then she's like, yes, no, yes. You know, she's being all. um you know, like undercover, you know, with her responses and everything. And then she gets another call, same thing. I'm in the car with my mom. Yes, no, yes, you know, same thing. And then another call, same thing. I'm like, what is going on? Nina, please tell me what's going on. Because by then I'm getting like, you know, I, I'm, I, I want to know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm getting really, really upset. And so she's like, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a few minutes, mom. I'll tell you in a few minutes. By then, we, um, I see on the GPS on her car, it says Albert Einstein Drive. And I'm like, oh, okay, so we're, we're about to go to Albert Einstein Hospital. And, um, and when we get to the parking lot, I see her sister. Her sister's a, a Philadelphia paramedic. Yeah. And so I, I'm thinking, OK, well, maybe something's wrong with her sister or maybe something's wrong with my ex-husband. He's he's a Philadelphia firefighter. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe something's wrong with one of them. And then her sister comes over to the car onto my side and then she just starts praying. And then I'm looking at her and then my daughter says, Mommy. Um, Jeff was shot. And he was killed. Mm. And I just lost it. Sure. Yeah, I, I just lost it. And um and then um her her sister uh, they opened the door and um they, they I, I guess they took me out of the car and um they took me into the um hospital the emergency room and when we got into the emergency room I saw my ex-husband there and then when I saw him I just fell into his arms I could tell he had been crying too mm -hmm. I just fell into his arms and all I could just say is oh my god oh my god oh my god and then um, 
he took me into a room and um we get into the room and um it's about it, there's about 20 people there's about 20 of our family members of Jeff's family members like his aunts his uncles his cousins mm -hmm. Everybody, they're already there. I'm like, oh my God, how, how are these people already there? But I had, a, when I was home, I was sleeping because I had been in pain that day. I was in pain. I was sleeping. My phone was like off, you know, I couldn't be reached or anything like that, except for from my daughter or my son or my grandkids. Those are the only people who could reach me. And um, so, um, and, and crazy thing about it is that the people that were in the emergency room, those people had been trying to reach me. And I had mm -hmm. from them saying they were telling me to call them or they had said rest in peace and all of this kind of oh. stuff. Yeah. So if I had seen those messages, it, it just would have been it, it would have been it would have been a mess. Yeah. So, and especially with you being home because you were home by yourself. So it was right. a good thing that your daughter right. actually changed. I mean, it's not a good thing, but you right. know what I mean, right. that you were around your loved one right. when you found out. Right, exactly. And so then um, my ex-husband said, well, let's um, go to the back. He said, do you want to see Jeff? And I said, yeah, I, I want to see Jeff. So he took me to the back. and um, And when I went back there, there was like all these policemen and um, all of these firemen and paramedics. And they had, there was like a room and it was a partition. And um, the room was part, like the partition had the room blocked off. And then he told them I was his mom. And so they removed the partition. And then there was Jeff just laying there just like in this cold, dark room, like his eyes were wide open and just blood all over his face, all over his neck, all over, just all over his whole body. And what part of the body was he shot in? He was shot in his neck and um, in his neck. And I just said, can I please, can I go in and see him? And then they just grabbed me and um, just took me away. They wouldn't let me go and see him. And I know in my mind that, you know, at that point he was a uh, um, like evidence. I, I wasn't going to touch him, but you know, I guess they just wouldn't, didn't want to take that chance or anything. So they just took me away and I, I was just really, really kind of angry because I just wanted those few last few moments with my son. I mean, I guess it didn't make any difference, but I still just wanted those last few moments with my son. Yeah. And I mean, it, it made a difference to you yeah. and to, to, to other parents that want those last few moments right. with their child because you, Technically, you shouldn't be burying your child. Your child should be burying you. you. You know what I mean? The children should be burying their parents after years and years and years of living on this earth, which is, it's just horrible. And, and my condolences to you. And, and I thank you so much for being brave enough to share your story because then you'll be able to help some other parents. Now, when you were going through that, was it like something unreal you know what I mean like and and when you went home were you by yourself and then you reflected on what happened did it take you a couple of days you know what I'm saying like how was the reality of it yes it was when, when I finally went home that night um my daughter insisted that I go home with her but I, I just said, no, I, I want to go. I want to go home. I want to be in my own bed because I have a lot of pain in my body. And I just wanted to be in my own bed. So she she knows how I am. She knows how I am. But I just wanted to go home and be in my own bed. And then I did. I, I went home. 
I called my sisters. I told them what happened. And then I wasn't able to sleep. I, I just shook. My body was just shaking. I couldn't stop shaking. I couldn't stop visualizing Jeff laying there in that, you know, in that cold room on that gurney. I couldn't believe this was true. I was angry. I was angry at Jeff because Jeff knew, he knew that I wouldn't have agreed with whoever this person was that he was dating. He knew that I wouldn't so have let's agreed. let's back up a little bit. So we touched on domestic violence. So how did you find out who did this? Did you know the person he was in a relationship with? We did not know this girl. I actually found out in the room, in that emergency room, who did it. My, my son's auntie told me. I said, well, who did it? What happened? And then she said, is Jeff dating somebody new? And I said, yeah, he had just told me he was dating somebody. And um, it was a Muslim girl that he was dating. And um, she said, that's who did it. And I said, she's the one who did it? And and she said, yeah. And I said, oh, my God, I couldn't believe it. I, I was in total shock. And I was so angry. I was just angry angry we had never met this girl i found out through the court system that he had only well i found out i guess from the girl they had only known each other i guess like three months or something like that mm. nobody in the family knew her nothing like that he never brought her around any of the family members because he he knew he especially knew he knew we wouldn't have agreed with he, he just knew and plus jeff knows I, I get sick of Jeff bringing like people around because I get attached to these like females. I get attached to them. You know, I don't want to get attached to somebody. And then next thing you know, she's old news. And then mm -hmm. you don't want me to still be attached to her when you have somebody new. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I tell Jeff, don't bring somebody around if, you know, you're not really going to be serious about them. So don't mm -hmm. be people around me because I get attached to people, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I, in my head that night, I, I, I didn't want to kill myself, but I wanted to die. I just didn't want to be here anymore. And I told my daughter that she got worried for a minute. I, I said, just listen, just listen to the words coming out of my mouth because she came rushing over here I said, I'm not saying I want to kill myself, daughter. I'm just saying I don't want to be here because, and I'm sorry to be saying this to you because you're still here and your kids are here, and my other grandkids. Are here. I just don't want to be here without my son. I don't know how to be here without my son. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like how am I here breathing? this air and my son is not breathing this same air anymore yeah anyway. i don't think people understand they take when you take a life you're not just taking one life you have yeah. taken so many lives within the family now was she apprehended and yeah. and convicted yes she was she was that same day because she did this in front of witnesses. She did this on the street in broad daylight in front of tons of witnesses. It was caught on somebody's ring camera and um, witnesses, I don't know if they held her there per se, but they didn't let her go anywhere. And the police were called, well, she called the police. I don't know if somebody else called the police, but we heard her police um, phone call, her 911 call in the um, court. And, um, um, you know, she called the police and then um, the police officer arrested her there on the scene. So she was arrested 
that day and she's been in custody ever since um April 17th of 2023 and you went and did it go to trial yes ma'am it did that's a whole nother thing this Philadelphia court system I don't know why they call it, uh, if they want to call it a justice system, but it's not just, it's not just at all. First of all, she ran my son down. It was caught on someone's ring camera. Like I said, we saw my son on one side of the street walking kind of fast. Her on the other side of the street running after my son. Then they met up at she ran on the other side of the street, met up with my son. I think she said something to my son. And then my son just walked off. And then when he walked off and turned his back to her, she ran up behind him and shot him in the neck. The judge said she was trying to shoot him in the head, but she missed and shot him in the neck. And then my son stumbled in the street. And then he fell and then he just ended up laying there. And then I guess that's when, you know, she, um, she started yelling at him. You want to hit me? You want to hit me? That's when she started acting. She just went into her acting mode. She started going into like, you know, she's going to act so her, um, for her defense, you want to hit me? You want to hit me? And then um, later on, we heard on her 911 call, she calls 911, and then she's saying, oh, Jeff, Jeff, please get up, get up. How's he going to get up? You just shot him in the neck. He, he was already standing up. You know, he would have been standing up if you didn't, um, if you didn't shoot him in the neck, girl. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Get out of here. So then on the 911 call, she's playing, you know, like she's the um 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 caring, right, caring person and whatnot. And then she's telling them, they're asking her, well, did you have an argument or something like that? And then she says, no, we didn't have an argument or anything like that. And then she tells the police officer, I think she told the police officer that they did have an argument. And then she tells the detectives that she shot him by accident. She tells the detectives um, that they had an argument and she was getting some keys out of a plastic bag and her gun was in the bag and her gun got caught onto the keys and the gun accidentally went off and shot him. When she, we clearly saw her shoot him, her arm was extended like that. When you're getting keys out of a bag, you're digging your hand in a bag like this, not like that. You know, you're digging your hand in the keys in the bag like that. You know, total lie. And the judge said to her at the end of the, the sentencing, the judge said to her, I don't believe anything you say. Um, I believe you shot him on purpose, but she told us that she couldn't give us the sentence that we wanted because the girl was a first time offender. They gave her a um, plea deal instead of letting giving her first degree murder, which is what she originally was charged with. They let her plea to third degree murder. And since she didn't have any prior um prior charges or whatever, prior um, arrests or anything, they gave her a sentence of seven and a half years to 15 years for mm -hmm. the death of my son. And then they gave her 10 years of probation. So seven and a half to 15. Mm -hmm. that, that's nothing. That's nothing. And I know I, 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 the judge said her hands were tied because of whatever. Of the degree. Yeah. Right. And the plea. Well, do understand this, mom, that before she gets paroled, she will have to go before a parole board hearing. Right. So make sure that you and your family 
attend mm -hmm. that because your voice matters. Your voice we matters. Will. And what you say, it does matter. Thank you so much for having the strength to, to share your, your story, which is going to touch so many mothers and, and other guardians. And I am so sorry for your loss. My condolences to you and your family. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Very hard conversation. Please know, male or female, please do not say in any relationship that is harmful to you physically or emotionally. Please get help. The domestic violence hotline number is at the bottom of the screen. Peace and love.